1827 speaks of God's power and might. What is impossible with men is possible with God. What is impossible with men is possible with God. There's nothing that's too big for him, nothing that's too hard. What is impossible with men is possible with God. What is impossible with men is possible with God. Hakuna chochote mungu hawezi kufanya. Hakuna chochote mungu hawezi kufanya. Hakuna chochote mungu hawezi kufanya. Good morning boys and girls and welcome to today's lesson. My name is Teacher Carol and today we are going to learn about Jesus and that Jesus can do anything. So let's begin by a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you've given us. Thank you mighty God even for keeping us throughout the week. And even today, as we are about to begin this lesson, God, we ask that you may take us through the lesson for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Amen, boys and girls. Um, I'm glad to be here to be taking you through the lesson today. And so we are going to learn about Jesus and that Jesus can do anything. So in the past two weeks, you've learned two lessons. One, you learned that Jesus is able to do anything because he was able to heal a man who was sick for 38 years. Again, you learned about Jesus can do anything through feeding of the 5,000, how Jesus was able to feed, to feed 5,000 people. And even there were baskets of food that remained. And so today we are going to look at another story on how Jesus can do anything. And before that, I'd like us to sing a song. And this song goes like this. We are glad to read the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. We are glad to read the Bible, for it is God's word. We are glad to read the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. We are glad to read the Bible, for it is God's word. So this song reminds us that, one, we need to read the Bible and two that whenever we read the Bible we get to learn about the Bible stories three this song teaches us that we are able to learn about God's love through his book so I'll encourage you that whenever you want to read the Bible please sing this song and it will remind you of the benefits of reading God's Bible so today we are going to read the book of Mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to verse 52 and it talks about a man and this man is called Bartimaeus and so let's hear about this man called Bartimaeus and it says Jesus and his disciples went to Jericho as they were leaving they were followed by a large crowd a blind beggar by the name Bartimaeus son of Timaeus was sitting besides the road when he heard that it was Jesus from Nazareth, he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. Many people told the man, stop. But he shouted even louder, son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him over. They called out to the blind man and said, don't be afraid come on he is calling you the man threw his coat and jumped up and ran to jesus jesus asked what do you want me to do for you the blind man answered master i want to see jesus told him you may go your eyes are healed because of your faith right away the man could see and he went down the road with Jesus. So today we are learning about this man and his name was Bartimaeus and he was blind all his life he has never seen and so this was one of the opportunity that God gave him so that he can be able to see. 
So he heard that Jesus was coming. He was passing by, going to Jericho. So when Jesus was passing by and he heard people talking about him, he took the opportunity and said, I will call to Jesus. And so he called to Jesus and said, Jesus, son of David. And do you know what Jesus did? Jesus heard Bartimaeus calling and he turned and looked and he said, bring him to me. And so the people who are also following Jesus, at first they said, no, they were telling Bartimaeus, no, keep quiet because maybe you are bothering Jesus. But even despite them telling him, keep quiet, you're bothering Jesus, he still shouted out the more. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus told them, go and call him. So the man went and called the blind man and told him, Jesus is calling you, he has heard you. And so they, the man stood up and I'm sure he had a carpet that he was sitting on when he didn't see and his clothes, he threw them aside and he went to Jesus. You can imagine the excitement of Bartimaeus because since he was born, he has never seen. Let's uh, imagine this. You can put both your hands on your eyes. Just put your, both your hands on your eyes. Can you see anything? You can't see. Everything around you is dark, right? That is how Bartimaeus could be able to see his world. He couldn't see, but he could smell, he could taste, he could touch, and he could hear. He couldn't see anything. He couldn't be able to see the beautiful things that God has created. And when he went to Jesus, while he was still blind, Jesus asked him, Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do to you? And Bartimaeus say, Lord or teacher, I want to see. And immediately, Bartimaeus' eyes were open. Now you can open your eyes. And Bartimaeus was able to see. He was able to see the birds in the air, he was able to see the people around him. He was even able to see Jesus. And even Jesus told him, Bartimaeus, because of your faith, you are healed. And now you can go. But do you know what Bartimaeus did? Instead of him going, he followed Jesus down the road. And that shows you how Jesus changed Bartimaeus' life. And also it teaches us that Jesus can do anything. Our memory verse for this week is from Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. And the memory verse says, Jesus said, this is impossible for human beings, but with God, everything is possible. Matthew 19 and verse 26. So boys and girls, as you continue on with your week, remember the memory verse that you can be able to memorize during the week. And remember that with God, everything is possible. Now, another reminder is that you can get today's craft on the Nairobi Chapel website. So please tell your mommy, daddy, or your guardian to download the craft for this week for you. So when you download it, the front page is the craft of the lesson that you've done today. And then at the back is the devotional for the week that will help you to do during the week. And I know that through that, God will be able to bless you through his word. So let's pray today. So let's be all in our prayer position and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the lesson today. Thank you for teaching us that you can do anything and everything, oh God. That nothing is impossible with you, God. Thank you, God, for allowing us to know that you can heal even a blind man the way you healed Bartimaeus. And Lord, even in our lives, in situations that may seem um, hard, Lord, we ask that you may help us, mighty God, through those situations, because we know that you can do anything. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Boys and girls, bye-bye. Have a lovely week. Bye. Matthew 19, the sweat six is impossible for human beings this is impossible jesus said this is impossible for human beings this is impossible but with god everything everything is possible
morning boys and girls how are you today today is indeed a good day that the lord has made for us we will rejoice and be glad in it how many are happy that we've come to learn about jesus i'm also happy and excited my name is Jemima, and i'm here to talk about jesus with you could we start with a word of prayer Father, we bless you this morning. We honor, we worship, and we adore you. We thank you for it's a good day you've given unto us. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to come and help us even as we learn the lessons. Pray to the living God, help us to understand everything we are being taught today. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Boys and girls, today we are going to learn about assurance of salvation. What does assurance mean? Assurance means confidence, having confidence in our salvation. But before we get to our lesson today, I want us to go back to where we started and have come with a wordless book. And in this wordless book, we've learned many things, many lessons. And we learned the first page of a wordless book was Color, who can guess? Yes, it was color gold. Gold, we said, represents perfection. And we said God is perfect. And gold also talks about heaven. Because in heaven, we are told, the streets are made of gold. And in heaven, God wants us to go. When we get to heaven, there is joy. We say there is no pain in heaven. There is no tears in heaven. Heaven is a beautiful place to be. And we, we, we learned that our God has loved us with an everlasting love. And he has drawn us with his loving kindness. And then, boys and girls, we talked about the dark page. The dark page represents sin. And when we talked about sin, we said, none, nobody teaches us how to sin. We are born with that want of doing wrong. And then we, have to, we were told, we have all sinned. You and I have sinned and we have fall short of God's glory. And that is why we have the dark page. So before Christ comes in our hearts, we are this. This is how our hearts look like. And then after that, boys and girls, we learned about the red page. And the red page represents the blood of Jesus Christ. And what does that mean to us? That means Jesus went to the cross. He shed his blood color red. And that blood washes away our sins. Then we become clean like this clean page. So we become as white as snow as the Bible tells us. And then boys and girls, after all this is done, then what happens is that then we need to start growing. We become like the green plants. You know the plants, if there's, there's no water, what happens? They die off. But now when we keep on learning the word of God every day, when we pray every day, and then we sing worship to God every day, then we grow. So we become like this green page. Now, after all this is said and done, boys and girls, we have done this. Now we go to the next lesson. Our lesson is assurance of salvation. And I said assurance means being confident. I know and I know and I know without a doubt that I have Jesus in my heart and I am born again. And that is the assurance of salvation. But now, boys and girls, then how do we know about this thing? You know, the Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12, I want to read that verse quickly from our Bible. It says like this, Yet all who, who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right or power to become children of God. Boys and girls, we become the children of God. Now, a question will be, now that I've become the child of God, if I do anything wrong, will I still become a, a child of God or I will stop being a child of God? No, boys and girls, we don't stop. I would ask you a question. 
When you are at home with your parents, mom and dad and your guardians, when you do something wrong, do you stop being their child? No, you don't stop being their child. But when we do something wrong, what happened? Our relationship is cut off. We don't laugh with them. We don't chat with them because then we have punishment because of the wrong that we've done. And that makes us sad. And we don't want our parents to be sad with us. You're sitting in one corner and our parents are in one corner. No, what do we do? Then we come and say, sorry, mommy, sorry, daddy, sorry. Or uncle, whoever lives with you, I'm so sorry, forgive me, I did this wrong. And then what happens when that is done? When that is done, our relationship is restored back and then we start becoming like we were before. And that's what happens, boys and girls. When we do something wrong, the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that when we confess our sin, when we come to God and say we are sorry, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us by his blood from all unrighteousness, everything we've done wrong, he washes us. Then our relationship is restored back to him. That is one thing. Now I want us to learn a Bible story where one person thought this was over. Now that book, Bible story comes from the book of Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to, to 24. Jesus told this story. And he's talked about a prodigal son or the lost son. Now, this, there was a man who had two sons. There was an older one and there was a younger one. So the younger one was so bold and courageous. One day he came to the father and said, Father, give me everything that belongs to me. So the father was a kind man. He divided his wealth, everything he had into two, gave to the older son his and gave to the younger son his. Few days after that, this younger son packed everything that belonged to him in a bag and he went, he went out to a far country where he spent his money badly. He spent everything so badly. He bought people things, he drank probably, we don't know what else he did, but he spent lavishly and everything, all the money he had finished. And the Bible says, when it finished, there was famine. Boys and girls, you know, when famine comes, things don't grow. And if they were growing, they die off. And then he started becoming hungry. He wanted to have some food to eat, but there was nobody to give him food and there was no money to buy food. So what did he say? He went to one of the people in that country and he hired himself out to feed pigs, boys and girls, pigs. And he had no money to buy food. And you know what happened? He was so hungry that he wanted to eat that food that the pigs were eating. Boys and girls, pigs don't eat good food. So he wanted to eat that food because he was hungry. But one day when he had it, he thought to himself, no, 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 no. How many of my father's servants eat well and even have food to spare? He said to himself, I will go back to my father. And I would tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. That means I've sinned against God and I've sinned against you. Would you forgive me? And he said, please don't take me like one of your sons, but take me like one of your servants. And now, you know, he didn't have a bag to pack again. So he went back, he went back. You can imagine he kept thinking, I'm going to say like this. He was very sorry now in his heart. He has spent all his money. He went back home. When he was far away, his father looked and saw him. The father stood and ran to his son. He got to the son. He hugged his son. He kissed his cheeks. Mama. He was so happy his son has come back. Boys and girls, he told the servants, come here. Take all this dirty clothes he was wearing off from him. And he said, put for him a, a new robe. A new robe was put. New clothes were given to him. And he said, remove those shoes. I even wonder if they had even shoes. But they removed, they gave him nice sandals and they gave him a ring like this ring of mine it was not this one but a ring like this to show to show that he it's a ring of sonship this is my son he was so happy he told the servants quickly go get a very fat cow slaughter it and let us have a party let us make merry 
And then boys and girls, their servants went quick and they slaughtered, they made other foods ready and they had a party. He said, let us celebrate because this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he is found. Boys and girls, they had a party. But let me tell you what happens. When the boy said, I am sorry, my father, the father took him in. Boys and girls, when we do something wrong and we have Jesus in our heart, we don't stop being at the children of God because God, I remember we said God loves us with an everlasting love and he has drawn us to himself with his loving kindness. He never stops loving us. He may not like the wrong things that we do, but he still loves us, boys and girls. But when we come back, when we've done something wrong, all we have to do is to go back and say, God, pray, close your eyes and say, Lord, forgive me. I've done this thing that is wrong. Have mercy on me and God will forgive you. And he will take you back again and restore the fellowship with him. And now we can go to him and read the Bible. We can go to him and pray. We can go to him and lift our hands in praise and worship and he will receive us again. Boys and girls, I want you to remember that, that our God loves us regardless of what we have done. But we need to always go back and say we are sorry and then he will take us back boys and girls i want us to go back to her and see how our god our promises that he will never relieve us our memory verse for today comes from the book of hebrews chapter 13 verse 5b to 6 it says and this is god saying never will i leave you imagine boys he's and girls he's saying never will i leave you Never will I forsake you. And then, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Boys and girls, I go back again. We say together, one, two, three, we go. Never will I leave you. Then, never will I forsake you. Then, so we can say with confidence, with all boldness, boys and girls, we can say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Man can do nothing, boys and girls, because God is our helper. And wherever you go, just know that even when I do something wrong, he never leaves me. He is always near me, waiting for me to go back, waiting for you and I to go back and tell him, we are sorry. He does not forsake us. And we have to stand in boldness. And so God is my helper. Now, boys and girls, I can ask a question. Do you have that particular sin, something that you do wrong every other time? You try to say, now will not do it, but you do it. Probably is taking coins from mommy. Probably is taking people's pencils. That means stealing. Probably it's telling a lie. Probably it's shouting or hitting people or bullying people. Boys and girls, Jesus is calling us today to him. And he's saying, come to me confidently and ask me to forgive you. Remember we said in the first John chapter 1 verse 9, it says, if I confess my sin, if you confess your sins, is faith one just to forgive us? and his blood to, forgive, to wash us from all unrighteousness. Boys and girls, could you close your eyes and tell God, forgive me. Let us all pray together. Just in your own words, tell God, forgive me. In this sin, I keep on doing this. Help me because your word tells me in the memory verse, you are my helper. Help me, Lord, to overcome this. Help me not to do this wrong thing again. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I prayed. Amen and amen. Boys and girls, I pray that you remember and you remember to tell even your friends who have Jesus in their hearts that when we do something wrong, we don't stop being the children of God. All we have to do is to go back to God and ask him to forgive us and we are reconciled back to him. Boys and girls, could we pray? Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to learn about your word. That Lord Jesus, you love us. That you never leave us, you will never forsake us. That you help us, you help us, oh my Father. 
Lord, help us to have this confidence every day as we walk out, that even if we do something wrong, we can come back to you and ask you to forgive us. Lord, help us that even as we go out into our day, into our week, we will tell others about your love. We will tell others about your presence with us every day. And you tell others about your saving grace. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, boys and girls. Now, boys and girls, we have a craft for you and a devotional. Make sure you go through your craft, you do your craft, and make sure you do your devotional every day. You can ask your parents to help you. And also, you can download uh, your craft from the Nairobi Chapel website and you can have that craft. Do not forget to do your craft because that craft also helps you remember what we learned today. Let's pray together as we finish our lesson. Thank you so much for being with us, Jesus, that we go to the, to the week. Bless us together and may you keep us in your love. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray, boys and girls. Amen. Till next time, boys and girls, bye-bye. May God bless you and may God keep you. May you know, may you know, may you know this. I want you and you to know this. How wild. No